Hi, welcome to Simple Tools with Denise. In our fifth podcast episode a few weeks ago, I talked about how to use science experiments with some of my older clients. I used to run around the house and gather all the materials for the science experiment and then put them back. Well, after doing that a few times, I got smart and I keep them all now in a box. It's so much more efficient. And a box this size can hold almost everything you need. So we're going to unbox this and I'll talk about the materials that I use. Okay, so some equipment here. Let's get... <laughs> okay, so measuring cups and measuring spoons. I used to have some really cheap ones that I just grabbed off the shelf and the numbers rubbed off, so the kids couldn't tell what the numbers were. And the teaspoons I got actually had metric measurements instead of imperial, so if you need the imperial measurements, watch for that. I love how you can see the numbers on here really clearly. And when I had the old set of the measuring cups or measuring spoons, the client would be like, look at me like, huh? what is this? <laughs> so they couldn't read the numbers. Okay, so that's some equipment. You also need some plastic cups, a spoon to stir with, and a funnel. So food coloring is used in lots of experiments and you want the liquid food coloring. See, the gel is real popular these days and I know the liquid is harder to find, but it dissolves much better. It disperses in the experiment so much better. So see if you can get that. Baking soda. Okay. Some balloons. By the way, these are the exact same balloons I use for um, the balloon shooter video I did a few weeks ago. I know some of the experiments say use a small balloon, but believe me, the big ones work fine. Just experiment a little bit and it'll work. Borax, which you'll find in the laundry section of your grocery store. Iodine, which you'll find in the first aid section of your grocery store. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it stains really, really bad, but uh, just have some paper towels handy. Okay, and laundry starch. You won't be using the spray function. You'll be unscrewing it and measuring it out, but I couldn't find a bottle that didn't have a spray top, so that's the laundry starch. <laughs> okay. Vinegar. Vinegar comes in huge bottles, so I just transferred it to smaller bottles so I can keep it in my box. Some Elmer's glue. The most efficient way, the most um, cost-effective way, I mean, is to get the biggest bottle of Elmer's glue you can, the little bottles they charge you an arm and leg for them. And to make flubber or slime, you're going to use like two of those small school bottles. So see if you can find the big ones like at an art store. Dish soap. Okay, vitamin C. You can buy the vitamin C powder, but I just happen to have this leftover vitamin C, and so we just crush it up with a rolling pin, which, by the way, the rolling pin is in my Play-Doh bin, so the rolling pin is not in my science box bin. <laughs> hydrogen peroxide here. And more hydrogen peroxide, which says 20 volume hydrogen peroxide. Um, in some of the science experiments, it will say a 6% solution of hydrogen peroxide, but when you go to the beauty store, they know it as 20 volume, so that's what you want to get. You'll need an empty water bottle, like a 16 ounce water bottle. Um, I just tried to find one with a really strong sides. If you get the really uh, collapsible water bottles, one of the experiments has a actual thermal reaction and it gets hot and it kind of crinkles. So you want to get a really strong plastic water bottle. It'll last you longer. Oh, and yeast. So I do keep the yeast in my fridge just to make it last longer. But that's it. That With all of these materials, you can do a great many fantastic science experiments. So be sure and go to that podcast episode, The Tipping Point, and see how to use the science experiments in therapy. Talk to you later.